you hungry for Jesus Christ? Are you thirsty today? Because I don't want another religion in my life. I left religion. I left Islam. I hate it. I just want to be free. I just want to be free. And then something happens to that person. A touch or a breeze or in a form of a wind. I know it is Jesus. Maybe you are sitting here today and you are saying, I need that transformation because I don't want to be stuck in this place anymore. Now this is the biggest harvest time. This is the revival time for God to come and change everything. Welcome to Embracing New Life. God wants to give you a new life today and he wants to change all your perspective and he wants you to walk in the supernatural. Today I have a very special guest, David Turner. He is a minister of God of the gospel and he is seeing miraculous power of Jesus Christ everywhere he goes. If you want to invite him to your church, to or your organization, all over the world, he's open because he's seeing the mighty works of Jesus Christ. And now it is your time. It is your turn to see a miraculous breakthrough in your life, in your circumstances, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for being with me today, David. Thank you so much for having me today. And I also want to share with you his book, Seeds of Faith. Seeds of Faith. This is an amazing book. I've been reading this book and it has been challenging me, changing me and taking me from next level of faith. You are going to exercise that faith, seeds of faith in your life. You know, it's amazing. I have a farm. I, I was never a farmer. I was in other businesses. And God said, you're going into farming. And one of the things that's interesting is I did not know anything about trees. But what happens is you start with a rootstock mm -hmm. and then literally they graft in. So we have pistachio trees, but it starts oh, out with this. Pistachios. They're so good, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, they are. Nuts are good for you. Yeah. And uh, big in the Middle East, too. Iranian pistachios yes. are very big. Very uh, they, in fact, those taste great. But we have American pistachios. But um, but anyway, when they graft the tree, when the tree is growing, they literally cut the tree mm -hmm. and is grafted in and all of a sudden that tree becomes a pistachio tree. Well, you know, it's the same thing. We are grafted in to the family of God as children, heirs of Abraham, heirs to the promise because Jesus took the cut for us. Mm. So you see, he was cut for us. He shed his blood and Hallelujah. we were grafted in and then we become that new creation. New creation. That yes. is the key word Amen. right now. I yeah. feel like all this barrenness from the old creation yeah. is, is today. It is gone. That Whoever is, not is ours. watching this broadcast right now is finished. Second Corinthians 517. He who believes Jesus, he is a new creation in Jesus Christ. He's a Christ. new creation. Yes. Wow. So we're seeing new creation. All you have to do is believe it and receive it. That's amazing. That's, that's the wonderful power of God it is at work in our lives yes. because we can walk in the supernatural every day, Absolutely. every single day. Tell us about you go to India and you see a lot of miracles there as well with your spiritual father, your yes. mentor there. And what are the things that really happening through your ministry when you minister there? What do you see happening in India? You know, um, going to India has transformed my life. Uh, traveling there, it was a uh, culture shock for me when sure. I got there, but it was amazing. I first went to one of my spiritual father's crusades, mm -hmm. and the very first time I had seen a year's worth of miracles very early on, and when I stood on the stage, they were bringing people in, laying on mats. They didn't have wheelchairs. Like you said, you know, when a, in America, when a child's in a coma, they're in the hospital. Mm -hmm. In India, they're walking around with babies sleeping in their arms. They're in a coma and they can't go to a hospital. So we go to the poorest of the poor, the furthest out uh, towns and, and villages. And they'll still be big for a village. In India, a village can be 100, 150,000 people. Mm -hmm. And we give out flyers and it just says, Jesus heals. These are mostly Hindu people. Yeah. And the, the first night there'll be like a thousand to three thousand people there mm -hmm. that just come because they're desperate to find out if anything can heal and it's free, they'll yes. go. 
Well, I was, I do my own crusades now, but at first I went to my spiritual fathers and I'm on the stage and they're bringing people in, they're laying them out. After his message and some music, he starts to pray this mass prayer and literally people start rising up off these mats. It looked like someone opened the graves in a cemetery. People mm. with paralyzed arms are moving, people are taking off neck braces and they're all coming up and giving their testimonies. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people are coming out. Then every night we'll do a five night crusade Every night, the word will spread through the villages. People will walk for hours to come, and yes. it'll be in an open field. Now when we do craze, Crusades, it'll start with 3,000 people. By the fifth night, we'll have 60, 80,000 people. 60, 80,000. 60 000. to 80,000 people. Wow. Well, just because the word of the miracle. We we don't have the money. We spend about $10,000. Hmm. We don't do these big fancy performances. We literally just, we have a stage, an open field with microphones and lights. Sure. And, and we just tell people Jesus heals and they find a way to get there. That's it's a, It's awesome. amazing. And we see so many people receiving Jesus. And mm -hmm. I always say a miracle settles the matter. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. I come, I always say I come, Paul came in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4 and 5, not uh, with the words of the wisdom of man, with a simple message of the gospel and a demonstration of the power. power. That's, that's so super important. Yes. And y yesterday we were talking about, again, India, but also you part of your ministry, of course, it is a fivefold ministry, and what Jesus uh, did, we, we are also, we are like according to John 14, 12, you know, if you believe in me, you do what I do, you will do even greater things than these. Yes. Part of your ministry is also you do deliverance. Yes. And a lot of people are bound, in bound with uh, demonic powers and uh, spirits. And, it's very little talk about and people don't know and I'm going to also exercise right now for I am going to ask you to you know pray over people you did some you bit. pray you you pray a little bit but uh, can you explain a little bit for people to be enlightened about the matter how people open their doors to the demonic you know there's healing and what people don't realize is there's spiritual healing and physical healing. Yes. But the Bible says in 3 John 2, beloved, you will prosper in all matters as your soul prospers, which means when you get delivered spiritually, it's very easy to receive the physical healing. As much as we talk about healing, healing and deliverance are almost intertwined mm -hmm. because so many of the sicknesses, when people go to death, you break your leg, that's not demonic. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, you broke the leg, it, it needs a creative miracle, it needs to heal. Mm -hmm. But many times, for example, fear is a demonic spirit. Yes. People say to me, Christians, so many times Christians can't have demonic spirits. Mm -hmm. I tell people, Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, then in the Bible, when it says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, God did not give us what? A spirit of fear, fear. but love, spirit? power, and a sound mind, which means fear is what? It's a spirit. Mm -hmm. So if you're telling me Christians can't have demonic spirits, then I'm sure when you've been to church, there's never a church where anyone in church has fear. Mm -hmm. It's not true. The, you see, the Holy Spirit captivates and comes and abides in our spirit, but we still have a mind, soul, and a body. Yes. So what there is, is there's what's called Oppression, mm -hmm. possession, and foothold. Mm -hmm. An oppression is like you could walk down the street and it clamps onto you on the outside. Mm -hmm. If you ever walk by, someone's had heavy perfume on yes. and they're not there anymore, but the perfume lingers in the air. When you walk through it, you pick up the scent. I love this demonstration. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Literally, I've seen where a migraine spirit, you could be walking down the street and it clamps on your head and all of a sudden a headache comes onto you just like that. That's called an oppression. Wow. There's what's called a possession, which means it enters you. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, a migraine spirit, as opposed to a headache that's an oppression, it's a migraine spirit and it's causing the headaches. Mm -hmm. So you see, then there's what's called a foothold, which means that's a possession that's been there more than two years. That's when Jesus said some come out with prayer and fasting. Those are the wow. difficult ones. Because they get like a landlord. They become like, a, you know, a, this is my residence now and it's hard to kick them out, right? We'll put it this way. Here's a great example. When you plant a tree, mm -hmm. Two months later, if you pull it up, it comes out easy because the roots are very shallow. But if you leave a tree there for 20 years, if you pull on it, the tree won't come out. It's, mm -hmm. it's holding on like crazy. That's you gotta right. work like crazy to cut it out. But don't be discouraged. I pray all the time and even footholds. They, they're a little tougher, mm -hmm. but they come out too. Because at the end of the day, Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Every demonic spirit has to bow to the name of Jesus. Amen. 
I was in a place in India where this woman had demonic spirits. They bring her in front of me, and she starts screaming, and she runs to the end of this hall. She turns around, she comes and runs at me full speed, and she falls to her face two feet in front of me from a dead run and prostrates before me. She gets up, and she runs screaming away, and she does the same thing again. When she gets near me at full speed, I'm thinking she's gonna run me down, she drops to the ground. All of a sudden, I realized what was happening. The devil in her was seeing Jesus in me and was prostrating. I said, daughter, be free. In the name of Jesus, devil, come out. Instantly it came out. The screaming stopped. She got up. She was delivered. Hallelujah. We have the power, 1 John 4, 4, greater is he who's in us, which is the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. than he who's in the world. So at the name of Jesus, the devil has to obey. We need not fear the devil. The devil has to fear us. We can shake True. the kingdom and the power of darkness with the name of Jesus. And, and the devils flee. I'll tell you, they know Jesus. They know Paul. They know me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <laughs> It doesn't happen when we stand in front of someone and say, devil, come out. Every day I'm in my prayer closet and I call out 300 names of the devil every day. You the devil, when I come near, when you hear my voice, when my hand is laid upon that person, you flee, you run away, you scream and you get out in the name of Jesus. Every day I'm crying out. So then when I'm, a lot of times I'll walk up to people on the street, they don't know why, they just start shaking. It's because there's devils yes. in them and the devil is shaking because they're they scared recognize. of the power of, they're recognizing the power of Jesus. That's as soon right. as people around me start shaking, I already know what's going on. I'm yes. like, and they're trying not to because mm -hmm. they don't want to be given up. What I want people to understand is it's not this big, dark, scary thing. Exactly. So it is the way of the world. Just like the sun comes up and we live by gravity, mm -hmm. there are demonic spirits and there are angels and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, ministering spirits. So with demonic spirits, we have to understand oppression, possession of foothold. Mm -hmm. And many times that demonic spirit is behind the sickness. If someone has a crippled hand, it's a spirit of infirmity. The minute I say, come out, spirit of infirmity, their hand is free, they're like, oh, that's a miracle. It mm -hmm. is, but really what it was is they were really delivered of a yes. demonic oppression. So many times it's a spiritual issue, mm -hmm. uh, not a physical issue that people are facing. And that's why um, we have to turn to Jesus, plead the blood of Jesus, call on his name and cast out. What I learned is you actually have to cast them out by name. If you don't call them by name, they don't have to go. Wow. So that's why I, that helped me when I started getting words of knowledge, the Holy Spirit, I would stand in front of someone and you'd say they have and whatever it is. And when the moment you call it by name, it would they have to go. Out. If they might have a choking spirit and all of a sudden the moment it comes out, then they're mm -hmm. able to breathe perfectly. Amen. So it's really very connected to healing because so much of that goes on. Yes. And, and it also ties in with breaking the generational curses as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. I'm going to ask uh, for you to pray for people, but I uh, feel like there are a lot of people writing to us and they have panic attacks yeah. they, because of breathing problems. Yeah. They cannot breathe co right. constantly. They lose their breath and they start having a panic attack. And I believe a lot of people right now tonight uh, just watching this broadcast and agreeing with you are going to be completely delivered and they will never have a panic attack again. Right. Never have cutting themselves again. Right. So uh, we are going to declare and we're going to just say the word. Amen. And Jesus is going to deliver them. So Amen. please, please feel free. Hallelujah. 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 Lord Jesus Christ, thank you, God. You are God who sets your children free. You mm. break every chain. Lord Jesus Christ, yes. you are mighty. Greater are you who's in us than he who's in the world. So right now, by your Holy Spirit, we lift up the name of Jesus over the lives of every person. Yes. God, how... The, uh, you told the Israelites to, that the lamb would be slain and the blood would be put over their doorpost. The same way by faith, Exodus 12, verse 12, we plead the blood of Jesus over the lives of every person in the doorpost of their home right now, that the death pass over them right now. In the name of Jesus, we break every generational curse. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, devil, I break your power. In the name of Jesus mm. Christ, right now, I bind rebellion 
rebuke and destroy the work of the enemy, every demonic spirit. I bind you, Satan, Lucifer, thief, roaring lion, one-third of the fallen angels, every mocking, scoffing, and vexing spirit. I bind right now every unclean, medium, familiar spirit, lying spirit, seducing spirit, false spirit, spirit of infirmity, spirit of divination, spirit of fear, and Jezebel spirits. I bind yes. right now every Hallelujah. spirit of regression, repression, suppression, depression, oppression, obsession, abandon, appalling, foothold, Beelzebub, bell yield, corrupter of the mind, accuser of the brethren, anointed cherub, enemy, angel of light, God of this age, ruler of the earth, prince of the air, powers of darkness, mm -hmm. serpent, tempter, wicked one, devil, deceiver, dragon, red dragon, voodoo, African Santria, viper, and brood of vipers. Right now in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Oh, I break every curse over your life in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Oh, yes. God, all the spirits of fear, worry, anxiety, panic attacks, come out of the children of God yes. in the name of Jesus. Oh, right now. You, the devil, I yeah. adjure you, you have no legal right over the children of God. You get out right now. Per Luke eleven twenty says, if I cast out demons by the finger of God, the kingdom of God has come right now in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. I cast it out by the finger of God. I set you in freedom right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, right now, Amen. every evil spirit be gone from you right now. Uh, pride, rebellion, defiance, envy, unforgiveness, all come out yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right now, poor self-image, those who are cutting themselves, suicide, Lord Jesus, spirits, right now, come out in the name of Jesus in Christ. Jesus oh God, all the insecurity and fear and worry be gone. Mm. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I set the children of God in freedom, the power of God, resurrection power, joy of the Lord, per Nehemiah 8, verse 10, be their strength from this day. Right now, we rejoice in the Lord, per Philippians 4.4, 4, in the name of Jesus Christ, I set the children of God free. Every devil, depart right now. Every curse is broken off of your life. Yes. Right now, you are set in freedom in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Awesome. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. And we close right now all the open doors in yes. your life. You need to close because Bible says seven times worse may happen. If you don't fill yourself with the word of God and prayer, praise and worship. So now on, since you are set free, you need to just follow in the, you need to walk in the light. You have to walk in the light so you don't open any doors. And uh, I call this flashing. I learned it lo uh, for a while ago from another minister that when uh, Brother David said, like a perfume, it can come on you, some, you know, demonic forces. And then you wonder, what's the matter with me? Why I, I feel the way that I am feeling? Before you, you know it, you're under a demonic oppression or attachment. So I call it flashing. What I do is I cleanse myself, Lord, with the blood of Jesus. After every deliverance uh, event, I, I, I just cleanse myself. You need to cleanse yourself. I do it every day. Even before I go to bed, I say, Lord, I cleanse myself from the, any attachment of the unclean spirits, any tormenting spirits, any lie of the enemy. I cleanse myself with the blood of the Lamb. Cleanse yourself. And I invite Spirit of Truth, Holy Spirit. I go to bed like that. And then I, I always have prophetic dreams because it is a time that you can open, you know, you are very weak, but in a good way, you can use it in a good way. You can be very weak to the Holy Spirit, vulnerable to the Holy Spirit for God to minister to you even at night. So flush it, flush everything, every attachment, every day, make it a discipline in your life to pray the blood of Jesus. And another thing, binding and losing, yes. you know, that's very, very important big. if you want to talk about binding and losing, when you bind and how you lose, people want to know about that. Yes. You know, Matthew 16, uh, verse 19, is <laughs> Jesus said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. and. Yes. I always tell people, you know, I, I have a 15 year old son, he's starting to drive. It, he may not listen to me all the time, but if I say, I'll give you the keys to the car, I guarantee you he's gonna listen exactly. to what I say next. Yeah, well, right. when he says, I give you the keys to the kingdom, mm -hmm. The kingdom, again, is love, joy, peace, and righteousness, yes. Romans 14, 19. So what is the key he's giving you to have love, joy, peace, and righteousness in your life? What is bound on earth, he says, is bound in heaven. What's loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. Yes. So we have the ability to bind and loose. It's our authority. Um, I want to give you, I always speak Bible, 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 but I want to give you two examples that are more my analogy to help people see it. Good. Pretend like this. Above your life, you know, I used to think the world was 
uh, all natural world with about 3% spiritual. I think it's mm -hmm. about 95% uh, spiritual with about 5% we live in the natural world. Mm. Above us, pretend above your head, there is angels and demons every day. Mm -hmm. And there is an angel that is near you. But God, for whatever reason, decided that man and the angel should work together. So an angel is not allowed to bind the demon without you giving the word. So pretend like every day when you get up, there's an angel fighting a demon. He's got a billy club in his hand and handcuffs. Mm -hmm. And he's standing there about to club that demon to get him out of your life. But he's not allowed to until you give him the word and say, I bind you in the fear in the name of Jesus. The moment you say that, he goes, oh, thank God. He clubbed him and he handcuffs him wow. for the day. But he, that devil is free to roam and create havoc until you say that he's not allowed to move. We're in partnership with the angels. So he wants to protect you. It's our job to bind and loose. Loose the angels of God. Loose the Holy Spirit. Loose the ministering spirits. I bind every demonic spirit. And that is the power. Not just when it happens, but every day in my prayer closet. So you, it's like the sons of Sceva. Yes. So they know you. But I'll give you one more analogy. Yes. So again, this is my descriptive because it kind of gives people an idea of how this works. Absolutely. I always say, people say, well, if Jesus forgave me for my sins, why should I repent for my sins every day when I continue to sin? Because he forgave me at the cross. He knew every sin I'd commit. So it's finished. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's and both. Yes. yes, it's finished at the cross, but we still need to repent for our sins. Not for more salvation. It's because it's for our benefit, not for Jesus. Yes. Here's what happens when we sin in our life, pretend, and we all do, even after we're saved, pretend that if you've ever seen a city street like in New York, there's a, a sometimes you'll see these manhole covers, right? Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. sewers down beneath. Yes. Pretend like you're standing down in the sewer, there's a manhole cover and the street, there's cars trafficking above your head. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. There are demons that are trafficking above you all day long. That manhole cover pretend that's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So as long as that manhole covers closed, they're all up there and you're down here. The minute you sin, guess what happens? That manhole cover is yes. open. You're separating yourself from mm -hmm. the protection of God. Those demons have access to you mm -hmm. and now you're in trouble. But the moment you come back, you repent, you ask for forgiveness and you cast them out, you're yes. fine. It's literally that easy. It's nothing to be afraid of. Amen. And that repentance is very important, right? Very for important. For healing, for generational curses, and for deliverance. Absolutely. Yes. Very important. So uh, when people come uh, for deliverance, uh, do you believe that it, it has to be their will to be delivered? Absolutely. First of all, uh, if someone doesn't want it, I don't ever pray for anybody. They have to desire it. Do you uh, know it from the beginning that it is their will or not? Well, I can pray, but I'll, I'll also ask. I'll, well, first of all, I'll know if they came on their own. It yes. Just like, for instance, even if someone comes to a meeting, that's like their sign, like, yes, I, I'm willing to yes. see Jesus and I'm willing to be delivered by Jesus. But I will ask people also many times to make sure, do you want to be set free? Because many times people don't. Yes. And if they don't, you, you'll leave them with a bigger problem. You'll cast it out. And like you say, seven more come back and they're stronger than before. Absolutely. So it's important that, and also it's very, very important that even when someone's delivered and set free, it's still up to us. We still live in the real world. We have to change our life. Mm -hmm. So it, so if you're living with someone and not married and you're going against the word of God or whatever it is, it's not to be legalistic. God sure. forgives us, but we're getting the consequences. God is not mocked. We mm -hmm. can't live our own way, do our own thing, rob, cheat, and steal, yes. and then think God was going to deliver. We have to... It, God is not doing it to us as a punishment. God loves us so much. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want us to live a certain way because he knows the consequences that we will create for ourselves. Wow, that's So good. that's the difference. So many people, oh, God did this to me to humble me. God never does that to you because actually the devil's weapon is pride. So the devil will never humble you because they'll say the devil humbled me. Devil will never humble you. He, his weapon's pride. God will never humble you because he gives you free will. Mm -hmm. How he said to Zacchaeus in Luke 19, he said, Zacchaeus, come down. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to your house today. He wants us to come down. What does that mean? It means humble yourself. Yes. So God we gives us free will. That. He says humility beyond, before uh, honor, Proverbs 15, 33. Mm -hmm. He wants us to humble ourselves. The moment we humble ourselves, he'll move. Sometimes people think humble is, oh, golly gee, I'm not that special. I'm not that good. That's false humility. 
The definition of humble, Hebrews 10, verse 7 and 9, means to do the will of God. Yes. See, Jesus is the example. What did he say in the Garden of Gethsemane? Luke 22, verse 42. Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Amen. He humbled himself means he put the Father's will above his own will. Because that happened, what happened? God honored him, 1 Samuel 2, verse 30. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2, uh, verse 9 to 11. He humbled himself unto death, verse five to eight. So therefore Jesus was exalted to the highest place. Yes. So same way when we humble ourselves, we do the will of God over our own will, God will honor us. We'll That's see the powerful. miracle, we'll see the healing, we'll see the blessing materialize in our life. Powerful, powerful. Thank you so much, David, for being with me today. It's and I joy. know that so many people are delivered. They got healed and they don't have generational curses following them anymore amen. after tonight. They walk we are, in freedom. Amen. We are going to hear amazing testimonies, I believe. And mm -hmm. I just want to thank you for what you do for the kingdom of God, what you do all over the world, mm. spreading the gospel and what you stand for, not only with the words, but with the demonstration Amen. of the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for being with me today. It's a privilege. Thank God you. God bless you. Bless you. So tonight we want to leave you. I want to leave you with this. You, you have seen, this is such a rich teaching and it is time for you to put it at practice, put it, put it into practice every day of your lives. Humble yourself, repent and close all the doors that you, you have opened through lust, through sin coming against the will of God. And today I just want to also challenge you, get the lies and deception of the devil out of your life. Because when you're in sin, when you're in lust, when you're living with someone outside of marriage or you're operating like with, 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 with someone um, just with lust and you are justifying it, oh, well, you know, uh, God understands or this person is from God. Stop just, enemy wants you to justify it, but seek the will of God in your life. If you truly want to get delivered and know this, when you ask a question, is it God's will for you to be delivered? Yes. Is it God's will for you to be free from your bondages? The answer is yes. I mean, Galatians 5.1 says, it's freedom that Christ set us free. Okay, he came to set you free. He came to set me free. It is his will. Is, is it God's will for you to be healed? Yes. You see, when you pray healing, and receiving healing, you are praying according to the will of God. So today I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, receive all God has for you. Freedom, healing, deliverance, all the good stuff. Heaven on earth in your life, in Jesus Christ's name. Until next time, walk in the supernatural power of God. Be free and see the miraculous power of God in your life, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen and amen. This program is made possible by friends and partners of Ishik Abla Ministries. If you'd like to support our ministry, please go to our website at www.ishikabla.com. There you can make a secure tax-deductible donation. Our vision is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ with a message of salvation, freedom and healing for the transformation of the Muslim world and bring revival to the body of Christ. We thank you for your support.